In this video, we will talk about the family terms for a woman in Hmong. So what that means is we're assuming, assuming that you watching this video are a woman. Uh, if you are a woman, this is how you would refer to both your own siblings uh, and the if you're married, how you would refer to your husband's siblings as well as your children, grandchildren. You can see on the picture here or the image, there's a kind of an overview. Uh, so if you were a man, you would not use these terms. Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't learn them per se, uh, but you certainly would not use them to refer to relatives. Uh, but if you're a woman, you are in the right place. So let's start. First, just a reminder, family terms are complicated. Uh, in Hmong, they're probably quite a bit more complicated than in English, in my opinion. Secondly, family terms are very important. Uh, they're linked to the culture. This, many people in this uh, generation, especially in the United States, but really all, all over the world are kind of forgetting some of the terms. Uh, and learning them can go a long way in showing respect to family. So it's important to remember and to learn them. One thing you can do is uh, try to write out your family members' names, uh, your, whether you're Hmong or not, uh, in the correct places. It'll help you get perspective of who's who and who goes where and help you to remember the right terms. Uh, let's start. Here's kind of an overview minus the kids below because if I try to fit everything, it'd be too small. Okay, so starting with you again, who are you being a woman? Um, others would refer to you as nya, nya, and that means daughter-in-law. Okay, so your husband, you would call do zi, do zi. Very important to remember, not just zi, because that's the word for father, or ling zi. Both of those can mean father, but when you add the classifier do, do zi, uh, it becomes husband. This kind of sort of breaks a rule or it's inconsistent with most of the, the way classifiers are used, but it's very important to remember it correctly so you don't introduce your father instead of your husband or vice versa. So um, let's start by talking about your siblings. So your brothers and sisters. Well, if you have a brother, younger or older, it's irrelevant, you would call that brother no, no, or do no, T-U-S is the classifier. You would call his wife the nya, the nya. If you have a younger sister, a sister that's younger than you, you would refer to her as nia, floa, nia, floa. And her husband, you would refer to as zi floa, zi floa. Now, if you had an older sister, a sister older than you, you would refer to her as Nia Lao Nia Lao and her husband you would refer to as Zi Lao Zi Lao. So now let's talk about your husband's siblings. Now, if your husband has a brother that is older than him, you would refer to him as Zi Lao Zi Lao. You would refer to his wife as Nia Lao. Nia Lao. You would refer to your husband's sister as Moa. Moa. And your husband's sister's husband, you would refer to as Ya Vao. Ya Vao. Your husband's younger brother, you would refer to as Gu. Gu. And your husband's uh, younger brother's sister, excuse me, not sister, wife, you would refer to as Nia Nza. Nia Nza. It's important to remember, too, that um, just like in many cultures, once if you have children, oftentimes um, the parents of those children will start referring to different family members by how the children would refer to them. Um, so, if perhaps there uh, that if you have a child, you would probably refer to your brother now as uncle so that your child can learn the word for uncle. And that's an example that we can keep in mind with all these terms. Now, uh, even though they're not your uh, parents by birth, once you marry in, you would refer to your uh, father-in-law and mother-in-law as Nia and Z. So mother-in-law is Nia. 
Nie. And father-in-law is zi. Zi. Let's talk about kids. Um, hopefully your kids are not this young when they get married. As you can see, I like to reuse art assets. They take a long time to make. So I have little kids, they're married, but um, that's not, not, not normally how it happens. Uh, if you, you and your husband had kids, if you had a boy, you would call that boy, oh, oh. And if that boy got married, you would refer to his wife as nya, nya. So you call her daughter-in-law. Now, if you had a daughter, you would refer to the daughter as Ntsai, Ntsai. And her husband, you would refer to as Vau, Vau. That would be son-in-law. Now, finally, if those children had children, as you can see, they're the same age. That's not possible. Again, I, use re I reuse assets. You would refer to the grandchildren as Seng Zhu, Seng Nzu, Seng Nzu. So that covers the family terms uh, for a woman. Again, this is what a woman re would refer to her siblings, uh, to her husband, her husband's siblings, parents, their children, etc. Uh, as a reminder, you can write out the family names. Uh, so you can write out, excuse me, your own names, uh, the names of your own family on this chart in the appropriate places. That helps get perspective. You can also use flashcards to help memorize them. It's very important to learn them. You can leave questions or corrections in the comments section of this video. Uh, and remember, family terms are very important. So hopefully that helps. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.